Hi everybody, Lisa over at iRepair iDevices and today my workbench, I will be working on this mini portable refrigerator. This was dropped off uh, by a local customer and the work ticket just states non-working. <laughs> Doesn't get me much to go off of. Does it mean not it turns on? Does it mean not turning on? Does it mean it's turning on but not cooling? I have no idea. It just says non-working. So, um, these guys are also known by thermo, uh, they also go by the name of thermoelectric coolers. And what's interesting about these are that they don't run, I'm going to say they don't have the same components as our household refrigerators do. Our household refrigerators run off of four components. You have the refrigerant, you have the condenser coil, which is on the, I always get these confused, which is on the outside of the refrigerator. Then you have the uh, evaporator coil, which is on the inside, and then the, and then the compressor. Those four components run our household refrigerator. On these guys, um, and also, these are found uh, the same way as also found in your wine cooler, uh, your little mini uh, wine cooler refrigerators, go uh, use what's called the Peltier, Peltier module. Now, this module has no moving parts, no mechanical or mechanical moving parts. Um, it is just derived off of voltage and current. Now, this module was discovered back in 1834 by French physicist uh, Jean Charles Peltier. And he discovered that when you have two dissimilar conductors and when voltage and or when current is flowing through these two uh, unlike conductors at the point of where they intersect he noticed a temperature change it would be cold at that spot and the heat would be transferred over to the other side of the wire and this is how these modules work so we'll have copper is going in and inside are in the material the two unlike materials that are used in in these uh, Peltier modules are copper and bismuth and these little guys are set up where we got two wires coming in the positive and negative which would be our copper wire and internally we have N and P semiconductors which contain the material bismuth. So when current is flowing through the conductors and when it meets up with the unlike material, the bismuth, is where the uh, reaction occurs. So one side of the platter is going to get cold. The heat's going to transfer to the other side. Now the back side of it's going to be hooked up to a heat sink and the heat sink is, go is going to absorb the heat. Then there's going to be a fan that's going to blow the heat away from the unit. Um, I find it just very fascinating uh, how these chips work and, uh, and operate just because of there's just no moving parts. I just find it very fascinating. I do have some pretty cool ideas I'm going to do, uh, um, some projects I'm going to come up with incorporating these into there. Um, but that's for a, a later video and on another channel of mine. Um, so let's get started with this. Like I says, this is a portable 12 volts and it does, you do have the option. I got my second, I got my camera over here. So here's the back side of it. We have the, um, the power button here. So we have the off switch and then we either can go to cold or there's even an option to warm. So you can either to cool, you can either use it for cooling or for warming. We have a DC jack here, so so if you're at your campsite, you got a you got a 12 volt battery, or, or you can plug it into your car, or even on your RV. Um, and then this N1 is for your um, AC. And now on the Peltier module, it only works on DC voltage and DC current. So you're probably asking, well, why is there a uh, 110 coming in there. Well, we have 110 being fed in 
from your household electric. If you're in the U.S., our, our, our voltage is 110. So we have 110 being fed in. There's actually a power supply board on here, which is going to take that 110 voltage and convert it to DC and step it down to 12 volts. Then that 12 volt is going to feed to a secondary uh, board, which is going to turn the fan on, and it's going to feed to the uh, Peltier, Peltier module. Okay, so let's get this guy plugged in. I got to see if he turns on. So plugged in, and well, we have a light here. So this is the warm light. Off, let's go to cool. All right, I'm getting the LED lights here. I am getting a fan spin. I am feeling the fan spin back here. But it's not... It's not getting cold. Now, mind you, it's not going to get cold real fast, but... Placing my hand on the back uh, on the back of the unit here, I should feel some sort of temperature change, and I'm not feeling it. So, let's power this guy off, unplug him, and I'm going to remove the back. I already removed the screws from the back just to save some time here. I don't want to bore you with that. So, I'm going to remove the back, and. As we can see here, I'm going to bring the camera in. This is the power supply that I was talking about a few seconds ago. Um, got the AC coming in on this line. And then all this, this whole board, its purpose is to step down the 110 down to 12 volts. So it's going to go through this little, all these components, all these components have a reason and a fun, it has, it has a purpose and so what it's going to do is take the 110, step it down. This transformer is actually what's going to step it down to the 12 volts. 12 volts are going to come out of these two wires here. And then these two wires are fed up to this secondary uh, board, if you can see, up here, which the fan is connected to. And then we have two wires going out, which is going to go to the, uh, to the Peltier module which is going to do do the cooling or heating so now i know it's turning on so i know it's getting the 110 voltage but i want to check to see if it is getting the 12 volts output so that's going to be my first uh test here so i'm going to plug it in now now because the lid is off you got to be careful not to touch anything over here because you you could get zapped so you got to be very careful so I'm going to turn it on and let's see, let's bring the camera down here so you can see my meter. Turn it to voltage and let's see if we are getting 12 volts output. So let's just, all right, I'm getting 12.36. So I am getting the adequate output voltage so that's not an issue so let's turn this guy off and unplug okay so the next step is I'm going to check that secondary board I want to see what's up there so, so I'm going to remove this label here because normally this is where the screws lie under just going to place this on the side here Remove, so we've got six screws. Now these two hold this guy in place and then these two hold this connector and that. So I just need to, because um, the switch is on the top one here or to the far left, I'm just going to remove these two screws and this is where that secondary board is mounted to. So let's get him out of the way. Now if everything checks out okay on here, I'm going to go to the conclusion that it is a bad Peltier module and they do and can fail. So let's get this. All right. So here's the secondary board. There's not much on here. We have a switch. Then we have the cold LED light indicator and then we have the warm. We have the connector to the fan. We have a resistor which 
uh, works for the LED lights to limit the amount of current flowing through there. And then we have a couple of diodes. Now the diodes uh, purpose is to keep current from flowing backwards. So I'm going to check these two components just to make sure that they haven't failed. Because if they failed, then that means that um, that could be causing the issue. So, And to check a diode, we're going to put it in diode meeting. We're going to check the voltage. Now the diode has uh, a positive and a negative side. And... The negative side is your cathode, and that's going to be the side that has the silver band, and the anode is the other side. So I'm going to put my black probe on the cathode side, which is the silver band side, and then the red probe on the uh, anoid side, and I should get between 0.5 to 0.6 reading. Going this way, so let's get this. I'm getting... 0.54 and on the second one I'm getting 0.558 which are well within tolerance now to test if it is if the component has failed I'm going to reverse my probe so now I'm going to put the positive probe on the cathode and the negative probe on the anode and if there's anything that reads on the meter it mean it means that the current is flowing backwards we should see an OL on the meter so um, let's as you can see here put the probe OL OL now I'm gonna reverse the probes again so you could see how they I don't I don't think I had it on camera earlier this is when I have the negative on the cathode and the positive on the anode and I should get 0 0.5 between 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 all right, so that's good. And then again, I'm going to reverse them to see if if uh, if there's any current leakage, and I should get OL on both on both of these, and I do. So the diodes are good. So there's nothing more on this board that would cause issues. So now my conclusion is going to be the Peltier module. So I'm going to remove it from it's it sits underneath the heat sink here. So I'm going to uh, remove the heat sink. Okay, bolt screws are out, remove the heat sink, and it should be under here. We've got that. Just a little foam. And here is the module. This is the Peltier, Peltier module that I was talking about. This is <laughs> this is what trips me out. This little guy is what does the heating and cooling of these refrigerators, wine cooler refrigerators. It's just amazing that there's no mechanical parts in here. And like I was explaining earlier, the top and bottom contain um, materials made out of ceramic. And inside there, inside this little guy here, sandwiched between here, it's, it's not even an eighth of an inch, are N and P semiconductors that are wired in series. I mean, it's just amazing that, oh, this guy's just so flat here. But anyways, um, focus, Lisa. So now, in order for me to test this, I'm going to remove them from the, the board and I'm going to hook them up to my power supply. And I'm going to apply some voltage to it and get some current running through there. Now, the way I know it's going to work is if, I can, if it gets cold. And it should, it should get cold pretty quickly. So first, I'm going to turn on my iron here. Dogs are probably going to leave when they hear the beep they don't like the beep when my machine turns on yep there they go <laughs> all right so i got my soldering iron here let's get it cleaned off and Right. 
like that. There we go. Here it is on the camera here. That's all that guy is. Now I'm going to set this unit to the side here. Okay. Now, how this works is when this was down in the unit, this is going to be the cold side and the heat's going to uh, go over to the, to the bottom side and then the heat sink is going to absorb the heat and then the fan that was uh, mounted behind there is going to going to blow the blow the hot air away from the unit okay so what i'm going to do is and, and normally there's there's thermal grease on here so i'm going to clean off the thermal grease so i want to make sure i get a good connection on when i'm testing this so let's just And when you're working with these modules, you have to have a heat sink mounted to it because if you don't, it'll blow out. It just will, it's just going to get too hot and it's just going to fail. So you have to have some sort of heat sink mounted to these um, modules here. Okay, so this guy is clean enough for me. Now what I'm going to do is going to apply some power from my power supply. Now these operate off of 12 volts. I'm not going to set it to 12 volts. I know um, I can at least get some reading even at 5 volts, but I'm going to up the current. I'm at least get about 2 amps of current running through here. Um, so I have my steel plate here which is going to act as my heat sink. Okay. And lay this guy side down so the black side is going to be the heat side which i want on the um, steel plate here so i'm going to connect my power so we got red to red and black to black Okay. And to show you, the only way, now my thermal imaging camera did not arrive in time, so I'm just going to use my thermometer, uh, my IR thermometer, and I, I really did. I really want the camera to 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 show you, but this this is fine. I did I didn't want to wait any longer for the camera. It's it's not due to arrive now until Monday, so I'd rather just get this done with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thermal camera here and I'm going to uh, take a measurement of this off or um, when this is on. And what I'm going to do, this keeps turning on me, come on. Get it tangled up here. There we go. I'm going to use this card, and when I when I lay it down here, it's going to transfer the cold to it, and I'm going to take the the reading off of it. So I'm going to read them both, and you'll see we shall see if there's a difference in temperature. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the unit here. All right, so I've got I got five volts being fed in, and I'm running at one amp. Let's see. Make sure I got my connectors there. There we 
go. Okay. So now we got everything connected. And we're getting 78 degrees. All right, see that on camera? And we're going to take this temperature here. We got 79 degrees. So I'm going to lay it down here. And if this is working correctly and it's getting cool, we should see a drop in temperature. All right. I'm getting the same thing. If not, it's going up. So this is not getting cold. Nope. Even even touching it's not getting cold. I should get coldness right away from it. Nope. This is a failed unit. And, and so now I'm going to show you what a working one, how a working one, um, what a working one looks like. Now on these, there's actually readings on here. And these readings, these letters and numbers mean something. Try to zoom in here. That's clear. It's not it's not focusing for me. The first three letters, T E C abbreviates for um, thermoelectric cooler. Then there's a number one, meaning stage one. These come in different stages. It'll say one, two, or three, and this is a one stage. Dash one twenty seven, that means that there's a hundred and twenty seven pairs of NP semiconductors in between this plate here and the 05 represents amperage though so, so the max amp that can be applied to this chip is 5 amps so you have to make sure what application you're running you match these numbers or you match these numbers and letters accordingly okay so I do have one which is the same model here TEC1 12705. So I'm going to lay it down on, on the heat sink here and I'm going to apply the negative to negative and put positive there. Make sure my leads do not touch. That would not end well. So what's going to happen is um, the unit is off. I'm not I'm not applying any voltage or, or anything to it. So we're going to take a temperature. See that it's 70 78 degrees and I'm going to take this temperature 78 degrees. So I'm going to turn it on. This should get cold pretty quickly. I'm going to lay this down and then some of the coldness is going to um, transfer to this and we should see see a drop in temperature. Turn it on, pulling one amp. It's cold already. It's already cold. So I'm going to lay this down. Remember the first reading was about 77, 78. Hold it there for a second. Pull it up. Look at that, 63, 61, 63, 65. So this is working. This is, oh, that's cold. That's cold. <laughs> Do it again. 59, 58, 67. So yeah, so this is this is getting cold. Now the other side is getting warm and that's and it's doing what it's supposed to. We got the two we got the copper wires coming in here, and between the two plates here, the two ceramic plates, we have the 127 pairs of N and P semiconductors, which is the bismuth material. And the current is flowing between where they are, where they're intersecting is where we're seeing that temperature change. Now the cold is out, is is on this side, and the heat's being uh, transferred to the bottom side, which is being absorbed through the heat sink, and then the fan is going to whoosh, blow it away from the unit. So the fault in this guy was a bad uh, Peltier module. So I'm going to power this guy off. Disconnect them and then put the new one in. Now I do have to apply some thermal grease to this. So 
Let's get this guy back here. Yeah. Oh. oh. Set him. Set him back to the side. Get my thermal paste here. Thermal grease, I should say. Nice little container. All right. And we're just going to apply some to this plastic spudger. Now I'm going to apply it to both sides of the chip. So, so you can see here, I'm just going to apply some on here, lay it down, and then apply some to the other side. So, got to make sure we have the coordination right. You don't want to have these reversed when you're laying it back down because it's not going to work correctly. So the black side was there, so it laid down. So yeah. So yeah. And what could happen, why these can fail is the thermal paste can actually dry up over time and that would make sense on why these fail because it, it overheats and they die just it just fails so let's Make sure we get enough on there. So when these come off the factory line, not all of them get it get inspected. So um, maybe just not enough came on here. Uh, was enough? Maybe not enough was uh, put on here uh, to begin with. So let's just make sure we get a nice healthy coat on here. And you don't want to put too much either. That's just overkill, but you don't want to put not enough. So let's turn this guy in. Okay, I'm happy with this. Let's just... Okay, so now this guy, let's see, this was down first, this goes down next, all right, now we're going to apply some paste to this side. And then we're going to put the heat sink back heat sink back on and then I'm going to solder it to the board and then we're going to power it up and test it. Should have used a wider spatula and get the job done a little bit faster, but I didn't feel like digging for it, so bear with me. I'm almost done. Set that to the side. All right. Let's 
look at the Okay, got the module or the heat sink back into place. Now let's get it screwed down. That side is started. Now let's get the second screw in here. Almost done here. Okay, now let's feed these wires up to the side here. And attach them to the board. Let's see, make sure we got the polarities right. All right. Dogs are gonna run, it's gonna beep. Nope, oh, there goes one. This one stayed. All right, so let's get these two wires tacked back into place. You know what? I need to get. I need to get my some solder. Get some fresh solder here. Tin these wires up real quick. Mm -hmm. Got the red. The red wire in place on um, the positive. Now let's get the negative attached. Okay, tapped in. I'm going to go ahead and put this board back in and screwed into place. And then I'm going to uh, power it on and see if this fixes it. I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to seal it up completely or I at least want to get this secondary board back into place. So. The wires tucked in. All right, let's see if this works. Let's let's put this back into place. All right, 
plug it in. We got 110 going in. All right, it's off. Let's turn it to cool. getting cold yeah oops Oop. back's not in bag's not in uh, so I gotta hold it I can't I can't let it go fan is running smoothly it's running a little bit faster yeah so it is getting nice and cold in there so yeah so this what I, I have to whoop, let's unplug this it's off let's unplug this I have to go ahead and now put on the back six screws and this unit is back to go so yeah so this was a successful repair uh, just a recap this was a mini portable refrigerator the problem was a failed Peltier Peltier module and I just replaced it with a, a good known working one. And now I, I am getting cold, cool air or cold uh, temperature in here. Now, it's not it's going to take a while to get up to the temperature that should be. But at least I know right away I am getting the temperature. Uh, it is going in the right direction. It is getting cold right away compared to the old one where I wasn't getting any temperature change. So, yeah. So, again, successful repair. Um, I hope you did find this video um interesting uh, if you haven't please subscribe like and share my channel and until next time have a good one